Okay, so I'm here today with a friend of mine by the name of White Horse. He's an American Indian and he's a, a great friend to have. And I'm just here to uh, ask him a couple questions today about um, his struggle with homelessness and how that uh, having a mobile shower here within the city of Modesto city limits would be a blessing to him. So, so White Horse, tell me, um, how long exactly have you been homeless? Uh, at least over 20 years. Over 20 years you've been off home. and on, off uh -huh. and on. And it's, it's, it's hard to get any place to wash up at, okay. any place, you know. So the, speaking of that, how, how, how actually do you do that? Do you do it at the creek? Do you do, do a bird bath in a, in a public facility? Or how, how do you go you, about that? Usually in the creek, in the usually creek. in the creek, because you don't want to bird bath in front of a bunch of people, right? Sure. you know. Sure. That's kind of tough in the wintertime though. Oh yeah, oh yeah, in and out real quick. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know. But you know, I mean, uh, it restores dignity when you're able to, to yeah. be around people when you you know you're not smelling. You know, yeah, yeah. After what? I mean, I, I also was homeless, and I know that uh, after after a couple of weeks, oh my goodness, you know, you don't even want to go around anybody. You just want yeah. to crawl in your hole. Yeah, you do because people tend to shy away from you when they see you're all filthy. Sure. And to have a shower come to the homeless. Yes. So they can. At least once a week. Yeah. If anything, great, immense help. Absolutely. Immense help to the people. Well, I know I've been telling you and others uh, around about uh, the, how we built this mobile shower, mm -hmm. and and we're almost complete with it. We just got a couple of little stages to finish it, um, and so we're about to present it to the Me the city of Modesto. We already have actually. We had it in the Fourth of July parade to just kind of reveal it to the city. But now we, uh, through a little bit more testing and, um, and working out the bugs, we're gonna have it ready to actually perform and actually produce showers. So uh, what we have to do now is we have to hammer out the, the final details with uh, provisions and, and, and legalities and, mm -hmm. and, and permits or what yeah. have you. But uh, I, I just wanna get the voice of the people as to how this actually, as a mobile shower unit, could go throughout the city uh, and, and actually uh, be a benefit to the people and I, I know that you would agree with that right oh, yeah there's many many people who, who would once they saw to see that shower come up you will have a line there people will be lined up to take showers wow. you know because they have no other way there's no other options yeah either the mobile shower would be great because we can, you can go here this park that park you know well the, the thing is is we're not going to be necessarily at the parks because we, we, we don't have the, the necessary requirements to oh, hook okay. up at the park. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be in locations throughout the oh, city okay, where yeah. it won't be far to get to. Yeah. Via bus or just via a short walk or bicycle yeah. ride, bicycle you'll be ride. able to get to the facility. That's good. Nonprofit organizations like the Vine House we're gonna be connecting to. We're lo also looking at uh, St. Vincent de Paul Catholic Church, downtown Modesto by the bus station. Yeah, I know that, yeah, uh, yeah. We wanna also look for an area in South Knight Street. So we're trying to get areas in where there's high concentrations of yeah. the homeless population. So, that but way. we're not going to be coming to the parks because we just don't have the the equipment there on hand. Still, it's it's still going to be great. Yeah, it still will be great. You know, it, you put your little sign. There's where you go to take your shower. Yeah, we'll you know? have it on flyers. We'll have it in mm -hmm. uh, in, in resource lists with the city of Modesto, the, yeah. the county hospitals, all this type. Get of thing. the word spread. Churches, get the word spread out. Absolutely. Yeah. We're that, hoping it, it catches on and takes off. I, I'm hoping it does too. <laughs> Thank you. I am. Thank you. Because now, do you do you have any insight as to how many people are actually living in vehicles? Because I really want to kind of target the single father, single mother with children living in their cars. Well, I know yeah, that they're out there. There's a few of them out here. You see them come here on church day, and you know when the church uh -huh. comes, they'd be coming in their Mercedes Benzes and they're still homeless. Yeah, exactly. Just because you're driving a good car don't don't mean you're rich. Right. It's or even if got. they have a home and then for some reason they've hit hard times and struggles and yeah. their utility bills get cut off. You still need to, to shower if yeah, you don't somewhere. have water yeah. or gas. Yeah, you either that or go over your neighbor's house, your friend's house or something, you know. Right. right. But the mobile showers for the homeless, that's that's a whole different thing right there. That's that's right. that's good. It's built for you. That's good, yeah. And, and I, I can't wait to show it to you because yeah. it's such a high-end design. It's such well, a, a beautiful... Just God yeah. let people know. Don't don't vandalize or nothing like that around. You know what I mean? I know. Do not do that. That's not good for the we, church. 
it's not good for we're hoping that we'll you know, we'll establish respect yeah. with these folks and we'll receive respect back in return. Yeah. So that's what we're working for. That just too. restoring dignity and hope. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't want one person to mess it up for everybody. Right. Right. Well we we are we're sure we're gonna encounter some challenges. Oh yeah, there'll it's, be a it's few a people brand new innovation. There'll be a few people. There'll be a few uh, pains in our backside, but you know what? We're, we, we're up for the challenge, and we believe God's going to give us the grace to get through it, and uh, there'll be fruit as a result of it. So we're, we're really excited, and again, I, I can't... It should it should work. It, it should, should work. work. <laughs> it better work. It better, it better work. work. Right. All that work you guys put into We've it, come on. We've invested the last 10 months of, 10 months of our life, yeah. and, and, uh, and yet in a lot of resources, a very expensive project, mm -hmm. but uh, we feel like it's a project whose time has come. Uh, and so um, we see that the homeless population is only going to increase, uh, the economy is yeah. still struggling. And so um, uh, we're just hoping that we've got this built just in time to, to meet the... To meet oh, the, it, it will definitely help. Yeah, absolutely. It will definitely well, help. Listen, White Horse, I really thank you, brother, for this little short interview. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I love you as a brother and um, just uh, really appreciate you sharing a, a, a few moments out of your life and uh, sharing your view on... Uh, on this uh, this new uh, this new service for the city of Modesto, mm -hmm. and, uh, thank you for uh, helping me out here. Is there anything you'd like to say to yeah. the residents? Uh, when you go for your shower, from these kind people, be respectful. Absolutely. Do not ride on things. Do your shower, and everything peaceful. Amen. You know, everything peaceful. So, excellent. Let let this goodness continue yeah absolutely let's let's not ruin it for everyone mm -hmm. absolutely well thank you brother thank you I appreciate it god bless you sir no you problem. have a beautiful day oh yeah i'm a cookie myself to death okay i got a big old thing of cookies like a big old thing of cookies oh good good so i'm a cookie myself to death and root beer and, and, and wait wait real quickly before you take off i know that you're a you're a you're a brilliant artist I, I scribble a little bit. No, you don't scribble. You have some masterpieces. And I just was wondering, uh, I wanted to just blast this out there in case someone out there in Facebook land uh, is looking for a, a brilliant artist. This man right here can do portraits. He can he can draw you, your baby. Uh, he can do anything I do, that, that I the do, mind can conceive. I do tattoos. He can do tattoos, yeah. And, but I'm just saying you can make posters mm -hmm. and I'd really like to see your talent get uh, get recognized because uh, you've got a gift and so if anyone's interested in that they can contact Dean Dodd at 209-324-4733 uh, and uh, I can connect you with Whitehorse and uh, I, I tell you what you will not be disappointed this man is brilliant thank you sir all right Bye. thank you Dean okay come on Okay, so I'm here today with my good friend Kevin Dole, and uh, he's been a friend of mine for oh I don't know how long, Kevin. Eight years or so. About eight years we've been uh, we've been comrades, and so um, I wanted to give him uh, a chance to give his uh, take on what what a benefit uh, mobile showers would be for the homeless population here in the city of Modesto. Real quickly though, first, uh, Kevin, how long have you been uh, dealing with the difficulty of homelessness at this moment? Since so you started church in the park. Since the start of church apart. Okay, that was what, about eight years ago? Yeah. Or seven years ago. Seven years ago. So, uh, Kevin, tell me, um, what kind of a real struggle is it for a person out here who doesn't have access to the shower? I mean, how do they interact with society? How do they get those showers? And, and, and how do they go about it? Now, there's the mission and the shelter, but a lot of us don't like dealing with them. So, if you don't have a place to go, you don't want to get a shower. Okay, so do you go to... Uh, public restrooms, you hit the creek, how do you wash your armpits, bird bath? Take a sponge bath. <laughs> sponge bath, okay. You gotta do what you gotta do, but yeah. how hard is that on your feet? I mean, I know you gotta have clean socks and feet. That's just it, you have to have all the you know, essentials to do it, and that's what a lot of these guys don't have. Yeah. They don't even have access to it. I, I, I talked to a guy who found out we were doing these mobile showers, and he was so excited about it, he said he's living in his car, he actually uses a Windex bottle, to spray himself, you know, in the, in the various locations in order to get uh, in order to get his uh, clean. And his other option is to go uh, to Salida, is it uh, Ripon, whatever, to that truck stop, and it cost yeah. him eleven dollars for a shower there. And yeah. so he's really excited. Can't wait till we bring this to the city. But um, 
Uh, I'm just wondering, you know, do you, do you really feel this is going to be a benefit to the city of Modesto? And should the city of Modesto embrace this movement? Because we built this shower bus on our own expenses, and, and, and we're just to the point of, of having it ready to reveal to the city and to start partnering with other organizations and, 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 and supplying these showers. But we've got a couple legalities we need to hammer out, and uh, we're, because there's such a brand new innovation, they don't know really how to handle us. We're an odd duck here. But, uh, but we believe that it's not only a good idea, it's a God idea. We think that it's time has come and it's going to be a great blessing to the population of, of people that are struggling out here without showering facilities. So, do you believe the city of Modesto should endorse this? And, and oh, by all, yeah, of course. So you believe it will be a blessing? It's all about dignity. It is. You're dirty, you can't get a job, you don't feel good about yourself, you need to be clean. Keep going. And, uh, Explain that. <laughs> yeah. The, you can't just go walk into a place looking for a job if you're all messed up and dirty and not shaven and Church in the Park brings you clothes. Now the shower, I mean, now you don't really have much of an excuse. Well, and then that's one thing that I've been, I, I, I mentioned to Whitehorse, and that is that we're not going to be bringing the showers to the park because but we don't still, have the, the means to have access to them. water and drain, but we are going to be in nearby areas throughout yeah. the city. We want to take showers to the other sides of town where there are no showers because there's only showers at on the east side of town, yeah. which is the, the, the Gospel Mission and the, and the, the Salvation sure. Army. But then there's people with pets, people with what mental disorders, people yeah. with uh, significant others who, who won't necessarily access the, yes. the services. So, um, and I'm also knowing that there's children out here, uh, you know, in, living in cars with their parents. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we've got our facility ready to accommodate children as well as, uh, you know, handicapped. Handicapped as well. And so, and so I know a biggie because I was homeless, so a biggie is socks and underwear. And so, uh, <clears throat> Socks more than underwear. You can go yeah. a lot longer with dirty underwear than you can with dirty socks because your feet start getting just. Uh, I know that one well. Slimy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, dude, let's just be real. And and everyone out there who maybe can't relate, they've been so so far removed from from being without a shower, they just don't understand the. You struggle. give up hope, huh? You give up hope. You give up hope. Exactly. I mean, you just you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do because uh, what do you do if uh, you you know you smell. You just kind of get reclusive. You just want to crawl away into yep. it. You don't you want it, and the cycle continues. You dig yourself into a deeper hole. Dig yourself into a deeper hole, absolutely. And so without the dignity, there's no opportunity. And, and so we believe that the cleanliness coming from and the dignity restoring will bring opportunity yep. to our members. And, and some will escape homelessness as a result of uh, oh, yeah. this effort. I, I greatly appreciate it. It's being done. I mean, it's, it's very much needed. But I still need to see that. And I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. And so I'm, I'm just put, getting the voice of the people. And so I'm just super glad you were here to share with us. Is there anything you'd like to say to the, the folks out there? Um, just what, anything come to mind that you'd just like to, uh, to say to anyone who might be out there watching? Yeah, if you got chances to make yourself better, take the chances. I mean, Church in the Park has done a lot for me. Brought me out of being in the park all my life. <laughs> Seems like all my life, but for a few years. And gave back my dignity and clothes and work and everything else I needed. And, and, and let me just say this about Kevin. Kevin has been a big part of the backbone. He's a key cog in the wheel uh, that makes Church in the Park happen. Uh, he is a volunteer who's been volunteering with us since day one. He jumps in with all fours and puts his whole heart and soul in it. Uh, there's a lot of work involved with setting up a ministry uh, and tearing it down, packing it back into the two trucks we bring it in. And, and rolling out of here with the park cleaner than it was when we got here. We do it one day a week and we take pride in it and we have a great camaraderie and, and uh, friendship, fellowship, family and community here with Church in the Park. Um, but again, we, are, we, we, we pride ourselves in not leaving a footprint or a fingerprint behind. Uh, we, like I say, clean the park up. We work closely with uh, Todd Rocha and the city parks and we make sure that we leave the park cleaner than it was when we got here. So Church in the Park is not an enabler to allow people to remain homeless, we're only here one day a week. So if the people were here congregated at Church in the Park waiting for us to come feed them, they'd starve to death because we're only here one day a week serving a lunch. But we do come and we do leave with the park cleaner than it was before. And our idea, our motto is to find a need and fill it. And our guideline is that we're not here just as a handout. We're here as a hand up. We want to direct people to Christ. We want to show them that uh, change comes from within. And uh, once they start restoring their self-worth, their self-image, and their dignity, they start to see that they are deservant of change. They are deservant of finding a way out of the cesspool. So uh, Kevin is one of my, my truest uh, volunteers of all. And I just want to thank you, Kevin, for your involvement with uh, Church in the Park. 
and the way that uh, you're a leader out here amongst these folks that are, are struggling in despair. So uh, I love you, brother, dearly. Is there any last thing you want to say that's on your mind uh, to the, the folks in Modesto? I'm going to put this on Facebook. Yeah, thank God for Church and Park. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, brother. You have a blessed day, brother. You too. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, so I'm here with Frank DeRose. And Frank is a really special fella. He's a friend of mine that I've known for a while. And Frank has a servant, a servant heart. I've watched Frank go around and pick up trash after others who've recklessly left it abandoned. He comes by and he picks it up and he has just such a passion about it. I just want him to share a little bit about it. Would you, Frank? Yeah, I have a passion to do this. God has given me the passion. God has given me the will and the knowledge about picking the garbage up. Uh, it's, it's, it's such a blessing, uh, not only for me, but uh, I don't, don't just, I don't do this for myself. I do this for God and country. And mainly I do it for God because God has given me, He gives me the energy and the strength and the, the willpower and the knowledge of why I need to be doing this. And it's just all about the love for God is what, what, is it, what it is. And, 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 and so Frank, you go from parks to park and yes. all throughout the city of Modesto picking up trash. Yes, I do. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's for, for some people it might seem weird. I don't do all the parks. Uh, I, well, you can't. <laughs> no, I can't do all of them. But there are two, there are a few places uh, that I do and it's not just parks. I do the parking lot over by the, the bus depot. Uh, I do some empty lots around town because when I'm driving by in town and I see an empty lot that nobody even pays attention to and it's got garbage in it, well, I, the Lord touches my... I, I go pick it up. I'm sorry. And, 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 uh, real quickly, how is it that you carry that trash bag around and pick up trash with the one arm? Oh. I use my show us your technique. I use yeah, this is my technique. I use look at this. this I use amazing. this. I use this bucket. I pick up the trash and I put it in this bucket and then I take it to a garbage can or or a garbage bag and I dump it in there and then I resume. I keep I, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And now, now Frank, you're staying at the Salvation Army. This is your truck. Yes. This is where all your supplies and. And, and, and your belongings are. Yes. But now you stay at the Salvation Army, correct? Yes, I do. They've been good to you there, right? They've been good to me, yes, I okay. have. Okay, now, <clears throat> Frank, just quickly, tell me, how how essential is it for a shower, of being living basically out of your truck were it not for the Salvation Army, tell me, how important would that be to have a shower? Well, I mean, come on, just a basic uh, uh, common sense. Everybody needs to stay clean. Yes. You know, plus, if I wasn't clean, it would be hard for me to work because I would be, uh, you know, it would, it would be too uncomfortable to, to do that kind of work because doing this kind of work is real, uh, may I say, sweaty yeah. and, and it's dirty. There's yeah. a lot of dirt and there's a lot of sweat. So I appreciate a shower every day. When I go into Salvation Army, I, get, I personally, I get a shower. But there's people out here that don't get showers. Right. And, and, and how could you do your job if you, if, if you couldn't change your socks? I wouldn't be able to do my job. Right. I, so if I couldn't have a shower, I, I can tell you on a personal basis, not just to soothe anybody's uh, answer or question, but I know personally I wouldn't be able to do the work because my feet have to have special care. So God I have to change you. my socks every day. God bless you, Frank, for doing your job because yes. what, you've, uh, what you've adopted and called your job yes. are some that others would just turn up, turn up, turn up. Turn, yeah. turn away from yeah. but you're not even getting paid for doing your job but you're just doing it as unto God I'm not getting paid yet you're not getting paid yet but you're getting paid yeah. your churches are yeah. in heaven yeah. there's a reward for me oh yeah. beautiful it's already waiting yes. I'm so thankful to hear you Amen. say that brother so yeah. tell me would it be a benefit to those out there that don't go to the shelters to have a, a access to a shower Definitely, definitely, definitely. Everybody needs to take a shower. And there's people out here, they're not allowed to come in. They're not allowed on the property. They can't, and some of the people, they won't because they're just where they're at in their life. Yeah. That, that's all it is, you know? That's all. Yeah. Well, brother, thank you so much. God bless you, and God bless America. I'm just so, I love to see your spirit. I, I, I see you whenever you come out to church in the park. And you're going around behind people that are too darn lazy to pick up after themselves and you are picking up trash and you've done it faithfully for, I don't know, 
I've watched you for six months now, yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 and I know that you're humble. You didn't even want to do this interview, and you didn't want me bringing the subject up. It's but, okay. But, but yes, brother, uh, it, you need to be noticed, and I, I just thank you. And uh, if there's anyone that ever would want to donate trash bags or anything yes. of that nature yes. to this man, yes. uh, I've been giving him bags uh, as he's requested yes. them uh, over the months. And uh, donate to help keep this man uh, doing his job faithfully, cleaning up the city of Modesto, absolutely free of charge, no pay. Uh, get a hold of me, Dean Dot, 209-324-4733, and I'll I will make sure that this brother gets back. I'm going to make sure you get bags anyway. But I'd like to see you supplied with bottled water and whatever else, a, a nice visor to keep your hat, <laughs> your head clear. All in the name of Jesus. All in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, brother. Okay, thank you. Now, we're going to switch on over, <coughs> and we're going to go to Carolina and Richard. Richard, go ahead. Jump in there. We're, we're, we're in the back side of the parking lot of the uh, San Salas County Library, and I went out today to find a few homeless folks to, to, to express and, and, uh, uh, my desire to bring my dream, which is these mobile showers, uh, to, to the city of Modesto. And so I've been, uh, I encountered these folks, and they all stay at the Salvation Army. And the Salvation Army is a, such a blessing to them in their lives. It keeps them, keeps them clean and, 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 and safely sheltered at night. But, uh, but Carolina and Richard, could you tell me, what would you guys do if you didn't have access to a shower and you were out here? How would you get clean? Public facilities, bird bath, a river? What, what would you do? Carolina? My idea would be a bird bath. Bird bath? Yep, that's my choice. Uh, I'm really thankful that I have the Salvation Army to begin with because I was sleeping in the orchards right before wow. I got to the Salvation Army. And my parents only live, you know, five miles from here. So it's just, you know time in my life where I, I call myself, uh, I'm like Abraham, you know, he's put himself out there, you know, amidst the wolves, yeah. you know, for God, you know, I got a bike from uh, another church donated to me. Yeah, Richard, the bike shop in the yes, Nineveh. Yes, at the house, yeah. yes, and uh, the second day I was at the Salvation Army, I had a bike, but it got stolen, I was blessed, so. Yeah, Richard's know. an amazing brother. And uh, he, he uh, truly blesses and enriches people's lives yes. with these bikes. I know he told you to give him a little feedback when this bike. Uh, oh, definitely. He even asked. Life. Yeah, he even asked for donations for those that do. Uh, you know, use it as a stepping stone and and get a little further in their life. And I actually gave him a donation that day too. Awesome. You know, awesome. so it, it's a nice experience. So, you guys, tell me the, the struggle you deal with day in and day out. Uh, not not. Not having jobs, I take it you're not you're unemployed currently. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, we need more jobs to come back to to our city, obviously. Certainly. But um, but again, um, what would a person do? Again, I just I showed you a couple photos of the of the shower. Shower. Yeah, they're spectacular. Oh, thank you. What would a person do though if they didn't have if they if they maybe just had mental struggles or something and they weren't able to go to the shelter? What would they what would they do? I mean, would they just walk around with no choice but to stay stinky or? Yeah. Pretty much, you know. See, I need the shower every day because of my eye. The eye? Yeah. What's going on with your eye, Uh, Doc, I won't say the hospital, but they wrecked my eye and it needs to be cleaned like, you know, real good and the shower helps and keep it cleaned out, yeah. Right. Personal hygiene is a must, you know. It helps, oh, yeah. Them, uh, you know, it's amazing. It's amazing what it does to the spirit, you know, refreshes it so much. Oh, every day I take a shower from down there and I'm just... Thankful, thankful yeah. we have a place to lay our head and to eat dinner, and you know, services with the you know, cleansing hope showers, all amazing. Yeah, you well, we're, we're sure hoping to. Uh, we we we've got it almost completed, but we haven't been able to bring it to the city. But we just want to. Uh, I want to put a face on homelessness. I want to yeah. put some personality behind the fact that you know we're real people out here. Oh yeah, we're, we're struggling. I come from homeless. I was homeless a, a year and a half myself, uh, due to some poor choices I made, um, and. Um, Yet, yet uh, there's hope after homelessness, Definitely. and we all need to embrace that and realize that you know what uh, ministries that are given the hand a hand up rather yeah. than just a hand out yes. need to be recognized and, yes. and, and noticed, and, and that's what Church in the Park does, and that's what Cleansing Hope Shower Shuttle is going to do. We're going to restore hope and dignity and give that hand up that people that you know may just be teetering on the edge of despair and giving up. Sure. And so, uh, well, awesome. should, anything uh, you guys would like to say to to the folks out there in, in TV Land? Well, I feel they need to do more in this city for the homeless because Turlock is doing way more than they are. They're not as wealthy as Modesto is. 
Well, I think a lot of it is uh, community. It's within the community, like he was saying, church in the park, yeah. the house, you know, uh, other organizations, other families that just come and give their time that are Christian-based. Yeah. I mean, we people forget about God. He provided the earth for us, and we're just slowly abusing it, abusing it. There's, you know, so we have to remember to take care of it because it's going to take care of us, yeah. right. you know. I so. can agree more. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so thank you so much, Caroline and Richard. Carolina and Richard. And next we have Brad Laverne. Now, Brad Laverne is uh, an, he's an inspiration to me because Brad also stays at the Salvation Army Shelter. And Brad um, is going to school at the Institute of Technology. Uh, trying to better himself while also struggling with homelessness. So Brad, tell us a little bit about your, your dreams here. Um, currently I'm taking a professional medical assistant program at um, Institute of Technology uh, located at 5601 Starter Road here in Modesto on the border of Salida and Modesto by Gregory High School. Um, we're always looking for more students to kind of join our programs. We need four more students right now because the people that are coming in and doing the class that's before your program was professional development, which I got an A in and I made the dean's list and all that. Um, those students are not going to get to start their program next, what we call MOD, because we need four more students to be able to kind of move people around the campus, if you will. Um, I also have a medical background. My dad was a chief administrator of... Uh, few hospitals, uh, California Pacific Medical Center being one, um, UC Davis being another, uh, Sutter in, in Sacramento. Um, wow. My dad helped build the, was on the team with Oscar Briggs, um, Victor Mao, uh, Karen Anderson, a few folks like that building the new hospital that's uh, still up and running today, good, as good. well as the old jail is so is brand new in in San Joaquin County. Um, I'm not from Modesto. I made some bad choices, and unfortunately, I'm on probation, Dean. So, kind of got to stay here. But I'm doing my classes I need to do per court order, and going to school and bettering my life. If um, the Salvation Army wasn't there, or the mission wasn't here. Um, I would have to go to a truck stop or drive all the way to Stockton, my sister's house, take a shower, or go to a friend's house, take a shower. I mean, it just would be hard. And being in the medical field, if you will, we have to be clean at all times. You know, um, we wash our hands miraculously. I want to say I wash my hands 30, 45 times a day because I'm dealing with patients. I also um, am interning right now at Avalon Healthcare here in Modesto on Coffee Road. Um, I work with the elderly people. I have a passion for the elderly people. Wow. Um, when I get done with this program, I'm going to be still in Modesto, but I'm going to be committing to UCSF San Francisco. Um, they've offered me a position as an MA as soon as I get wow. done. I'm going on to their CNA program, and they will also provide me with housing while I'm going to school and working there. And I'll come back to Modesto on the weekends because I don't want to not get to see my church family, you know. Awesome. Um, and by the grace of God, I make it every day because I have some health problems. Um, and unfortunately, as many people go through this this deal um, of not only being homeless but trying to get Social Security, um, the country is, is is broke right now. You know, our country as a whole is broke. The economy is bad. Thank God that I'm in a field where there's an abundance of jobs. And, you know... The thing that I can say, I enjoy going to school. You know, I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and I shave and I put on my scrubs and I do it all over again, Monday through Thursday. Friday is my only like day off from school. On the weekends, I'm at the nursing home with the elderly people playing bingo with them, doing a little karaoke, you know. And I do a lot of studying. Um, studying for medical exams is not, the, not easy. Yeah not easy there's a lot of terminology um, but this is just a great field to be in because even though I am in the situation I'm in I'm still able to better myself if you will Dean because I can merely go to Salvation Army get a get a hot dinner get a hot shower go to sleep get up in the morning do it all over again 
and in my field, I'm helping people all the time. Uh, you know, we have people that have seizure issues at the shelter. Um, we have people that have diabetes. We have people that have low sugar, heart problems, you know, a lot of health problems. And because of my skills that I have already acquired and what I'm learning in school, I'm able to stand by until the paramedics get there and the ambulance comes and say, okay, his pulse is blah, blah, blah. His blood pressure is da, 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 da. The, his symptoms are this. I know how to talk to the paramedics. Um, I have a great rapport with this whole city of Modesto as far as the paramedics. Um, uh, I just want to talk real quick about the things that Modesto Toyota kind of does, Dean. A lot of people don't realize what happens behind the scenes, but I do because I have the great pleasure of being friends with Lynn Simpson, who is a uh, the owner of Modesto Toyota, has been for, I want to say, 50 or 60 years now. Um, Lynn is a great man. He donates to the Salvation Army. He donates to the Red Shield for the kids. Um, he donates to the Veterans Program. I'm a veteran myself. And we get a lot of things, a lot of services because of Modesto Toyota. Um, and I'm fortunate enough in my life, you know, my dad's not here. He's in Montana living his life out. Uh, he's not in the best of health either. I have a great man in Escalon, Mr. Ronald Bader, who has been an asset in my life. He's been in my life since 1977. He just turned 86 on the 29th of June, and he's still able to get up on a walking horse and run bird dogs. And, uh, you know, you can't just stick a key in a D8 like he does and get underneath it and grease the Zerks. It's, it doesn't happen by magic, Dean. I mean, those roads and stuff that he does for us, making it possible for not only myself, but everybody else to run bird dogs. Um, and the great folks at Perina, the AFTCA, was the Amherst Clubs of America. You know, I have a lot of bird dog buddies. I'm in the bird dog world, and I travel a lot. Um, my sister gave me this Volvo, so I have something to drive. Let, let me let me let me just shift gears here, and, and I, I love hearing your story. I can listen to you talk all day. Yeah. But but now speaking of, now this is your car. Yes. I noticed it has Arizona plates. Yeah, my sister moved here from Arizona. Okay, now and now, gave me the car. Now, Brad. So you have your car. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the shelter, you'd be living in your car. Right. And you'd still be maintaining your your attendance at school. And yes, doing sir. What you're doing, you'd still be. I'm so, not going to stop. So what would you do? You'd have to. I would. Go to um, public restrooms to bathe, or you'd have to. You know, yeah. Couldn't stink it. At I can't. I or, can't. Or work for that matter. Right. Right. So do you think even if, per se, you didn't have your vehicle and you weren't staying at the shelter, would it be possible that uh, these mobile showers would be a blessing to you? Oh and yeah, it would be a great blessing. If you had a set schedule in place where you knew they would be this on this yeah. day and this day and right, these right. different locations. And also, you know, a place to uh, wash our clothes, maybe attach that a little trailer with some washers and dryers. Or if there was a program through the folks at Church in the Park or the other churches got together. Um, when I was in Reno, Nevada, I was part of a church called The Vibe. Um, the pastor unfortunately got sick, so we've all moved to the Life Church up there in Reno, Nevada. But um, we would once a month have a, a clothes washing day. And we'd all meet at the laundromat and we would provide the quarters for them and we would right. wash not just great some idea. clothes, all the clothes. That's a great idea. So if we could get people to do that, even for myself, because I don't like for the shelter to wash my scrubs because I only have three pairs. And when you wash your clothes there, you have to mark inside of them with the, with the black pen, put your bed number. It's just a difficult situation. So I utilize the laundromat. Um, matter of fact, I need to go to the laundromat now. <laughs> but... Um, uh, I think you, you know, just gave me a new endeavor. Yeah, but I, you know, I'm blessed by the grace of God, and every day above ground is a good day. And like I said, I have a passion for just helping people, Dean. Amen. You know, I may be homeless, but that doesn't mean that I can't help. You know, Frank or these guys, or you know, when I see somebody that has a medical need, I I try to be on the scene. Um, the other day, I was sitting there waiting to go into the shelter, and. Uh, a gentleman I know by the name of Kenneth Williams walked up to me, asked specifically for me. I checked his vital signs. He was having a heart issue. I got on the phone. I called 911. I spoke to the folks. Paramedics got there. I told him his name, his birth date, his vital signs. They checked him out. They got him in the ambulance in a timely manner. 
He went to the hospital. They took care of him. And uh, I just talked to saved Kenneth a couple days ago, and I, I saved his life. Hallelujah. You know, as, as MAs, we can't do everything that an EMT does. But before I'm an MA, I'm an EMT and a CNA. That's Amen. that's what I do. You know, and I just love awesome. cha helping people. Man, you got a great calling on your life, man. And I, for whatever reason, you're in this season at the Salvation Army. You're there to help and assist. Well, I know the you're reason be moving on. The reason I'm in this season, Dean, if you will, is because um, I was with uh, the mother of my children for 12 years. We're no longer together, and uh, she lives in Reno, Nevada. Um, like I said, I'm on probation for making a couple bad choices in my life. Um, I uh, have not drank alcohol for three months now, so I've kind of laid that down. Not going to tell you I won't have a beer, you know, we all do, um, but I'm not in the bars, I'm not out there karaoke, and I'm not in the clubs and all that. Um, I'm just productive. concentrating on my schooling. And I'm staying focused. And I got to focus, and I have a big shoes to fill. As my dad was the chief administrator of a hospital for many years, uh, when I was a kid, I worked alongside of him, helped him at his job. Um, I went to school in Concord at De La Salle High School, graduated with 4.0 in honors, and so education has always been a big thing in my family. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the book called Greatest Seniors of the World, but both my dad's names and my name is in there. Uh, my dad's name is also Brad Laverne as well. And, you know, not a lot of people see it like I do, Dean, because the simple fact is this. I go to Ducks Unlimited dinners. I go to Pheasants Forever dinners. I go to SCI, which is Safari Club International. I rub elbows with, even though I'm homeless right now, does not mean that I don't keep my professionalism at all times. And I have a lot of big shoes to fill because I can't just go out in the community and do whatever I want to do and act a fool because... That would be very bad in the eyes of not only the Gallows, the Stensons, Mr. Bader, Miss Jan Corbett, everybody that I associate with. And these people have a lot of money, but I won't dare ask them for a dime because, you know, I'm going to do it on my you're, own. You're going to make it, brother. You're going to yeah. make it. Hey, let me, let me pause right there. And I, I'm just feeling the movement. Could I get all you guys come on over here? I want to close this whole video session in a quick prayer and just ask God to come bless your lives, bless our causes. All of us have a purpose here. So let's all just grab in a circle here, guys. Take hands and just... Father, thank you for the opportunity, the privilege to meet these wonderful brothers and sisters today. Lord, what a blessing. I just, I, I think of the way that God, you are very active in the lives of each and every one of these people, Lord. And I thank you, Father, that you never leave us and you never forsake us. No matter what we're going through, God, you're right there by our side. So, Father, thank you for this encounter, for this interview with these brothers and sisters. And I just pray down blessings upon them, Lord. I pray that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour a blessing upon them in which they cannot contain. And I thank you for their time and their heart and their input for this cause that you put on my heart with this Cleansing Hope Shower Shuttle. God, may you see it to, through to fruition in Jesus' name. And watch over and protect my brothers and sisters, I pray also in Jesus' name, Father. Amen. 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 Hello. Thank you. Hey, that was good. Yeah, Jesus Christ has a sense time. of humor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I give you a list of things that you should prove that. Hey, you yeah. know what I was noticing <laughs> while while we were sitting here doing this video? Frank ran over there yep. well, and picked up Jeff. a whole bag, two bags of rubbish, of trash that yeah. was lining up yeah. the... The large workers never died. Somebody just threw their garbage <laughs> down. I, I hate that. Yeah, oh, you, uh, you, guys are, there, huh? you guys are amazing in his <laughs> sight. God bless you all. I love you. Amen. Uh -oh. Amen.